Sofia Vergara's life may appear to be extremely perfect, but her reality is far from that. Behind her seemingly perfect marriage and luxurious lifestyle, Sofia isn't as luxurious as you might think. It might be hard to imagine, but you guys are truly never going to believe all that's really going on with her. Sofia became famous for her role in Modern Family as Gloria Delgado Pritchard. Gloria may have had a seemingly perfect life, but Sofia's real life is the complete opposite. She moved to the United States in the 1990s, and not long after she landed a gig hosting a travel show, life was going well for Sofia because she was finally living her dream. But this dream was quick to turn into a major nightmare. Not too long after she had moved to the United States, a tragedy struck Sofia and her family. Sofia had lost her older brother, Raphael. Saying that this was a devastating time for Sofia and her family would be a major understatement, especially because of how this happened. Apparently, Sofia's newfound success in the United States made her family targets for kidnappers back in Colombia, and Raphael was just a victim of a failed kidnapping attempt. For years after this had happened, Sofia had blamed herself for what happened to Raphael, and she couldn't live with having the rest of her family in Colombia. So to avoid this horrific situation from repeating itself, Sofia decided to relocate the rest of her family over to the United States. But even their move to the United States couldn't take away the gap that Raphael's loss had caused. Still, with them being together, they were able to start recovering from their loss. Sadly, the darkness didn't lurk too far away, and this wouldn't be the last time Sofia would deal with a life-changing situation. In 2000, while attending an appointment for her son Manalo, Sofia's doctor convinced her to get a body check, and it was during this check that Sofia's doctor found out something horrific. Sofia was diagnosed with thyroid cancer at just 28 years old, and even though she was able to have surgery to remove her thyroid, her health struggles didn't stop there. Not long after her surgery, she developed hyperthyroidism. For Sophia, it was like moving from one bad thing to another, and I don't think anyone can blame her for thinking this way. But Sophia, being the fighter that she is, was able to overcome this, and she ended up becoming the spokesperson for campaigns to educate people about hyperthyroidism. Even though Sophia is stuck with taking medication for the rest of her life, she still found positives in her condition and is still pushing. Today, she is known as one of the biggest actresses on the planet. However, despite her health struggles, her rise to fame was anything but easy. Not a lot of people fell in love with Sophia on Modern Family because of her Colombian accent and charm. But what people didn't know is that same accent was also a huge hindrance to her rise to success. Because of it, she wasn't getting as many opportunities as an actress with an American accent. Apparently, when they would get 10 scripts in a week, she would get two a month. So Sophia got herself a coach to help her get rid of her Colombian accent. But getting a coach did her more harm than it did good. Sophia found herself getting worse during auditions because instead of focusing on acting, she was focusing on her pronunciation. Sophia was failing and she was failing bad, but former ABC president Steve McPherson believed in her and kept her on a signed deal with ABC, even after two failed comedies. Steve's loyalty to Sophia ended up paying off when Modern Family co-creators Chris Lloyd and Steven Levantine wrote the role for Gloria specifically for Sophia, and that was how her acting career took off. But with her brewing acting career, Sophia's love life was still very far behind. Some might even say she was unlucky in love. On multiple occasions, Sophia was linked with some really dangerous men, and she even had to fight to get out of some really nasty relationships. But most would agree that the biggest battle she's fought to date has to be the one she's currently has with her ex-fiance Nick Lowe. When Sophia met Nick, she may have thought that she had found her prince charming, but he turned out to be the complete opposite. Still, Sophia went ahead to get engaged to Nick, and they had IVF treatments that resulted in two frozen embryos. Obviously, you wouldn't do something like this if you weren't planning on spending the rest of your life with someone. This is what Sophia and Nick thought would happen to them. Sadly, a year after they had gotten these treatments, they ended their relationship, and that was when their problems began. At the start of the IVF process, Sophia and Nick both signed a form. Now, this form included an agreement with different options of what would happen to the embryos if not implanted. According to the form that they both signed, if either of them died, the embryos would be destroyed. The only condition for the embryos to be implanted planted is if they both agree to it. If not, the embryos are supposed to remain frozen indefinitely. 
For whatever crazy reason, Nick decided that he'd unfreeze the embryos after their split and Sophia obviously wasn't in support of this. This led to the nasty court case that they are currently in. According to Sophia, she doesn't think it would be necessary to bring a child into the world when both parents hate each other. Although she claims that she doesn't actually hate Nick, it's pretty obvious that she doesn't like him either. Nick, on the other hand, claims that he's pro-life and he's fighting for the embryo's right to live. But many people wondered if he was just trying to get child support from Sophia. Nick and Sophia's court case has currently been going on for the past seven years and frankly, it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Now what's crazy is that Nick claims to be pro-life, but during this court case, it was recently revealed that there were two women who ended their pregnancies for Nick. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't really make sense for someone who claims to be pro-life. And Nick's defense to this is that he developed his pro-life beliefs after this had already happened in his life. Sophia obviously called him out for being a liar. For her, Nick doesn't really want to reveal his true motivation for wanting to unfreeze the embryos, which has to be child support, right? And this is probably why he decided to keep the identities of these two women hidden even after being asked to reveal them. I mean, he even went as far as to say that he would rather go to jail than actually reveal the names of these women in public, so he's pretty serious about his stance. Nick and Sophia's case initially began in California, but Nick has taken the case to several American states. It's pretty obvious that he's looking for a big win, but so far he hasn't gotten the results he's been hoping for. The most recent case took place in Louisiana and it actually ended up with Nick getting reprimanded by the court. Safe to say, he won't be back there. This was because Nick actually doesn't live in Louisiana or has any intention of living there. So he was accused of forum shopping by the court. Now, if you don't know what this means, Forum shopping means choosing a course or jurisdiction that's likely to provide the most favorable outcome for your specific case. After being accused by the court of making a mockery of the Louisiana legal system, I honestly think that Nick is probably going to find another court to handle this case. Now, we don't know if the outcome is actually going to be favorable for him because so far it hasn't. Do you guys think Nick is actually going to get what he wants? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments.